season, did anyone at Derby or Nottingham Forest or Villa or Coventry look at Leicester and think, my goodness, it's about time the Midlands won something? I doubt that, but should we? Because last season was not just a freak for Leicester, but for the Midlands as a whole. The last team to win one of the three major trophies, the European Cup, League or FA Cup before Leicester? It was my lot, Coventry, in 1987. And in 50 years since 1968, that's 150 chances to win the League, European Cup or FA Cup. A Midlands team has done it 10 times. 10 times out of 150. West Brom in 68, Derby twice in the early 70s, Forest won the League and European Cup twice, Villa won the League and European Cup, Cov in 87, and Leicester last season. So on that list, there are no mentions at all of Stoke, Wolves and Birmingham. And none of these clubs are going to add to it this year either. The success stories in the Premier League are currently West Brom and Stoke. And fair play to them. Financial prudence and common sense and stability have established them. But can they make that next step up to the top six? Not without a lot of work, I would suggest, and a lot of money. Of the remainder of the Midlands sides, one is in its lowest place ever. One is heading for its lowest league spot since the early 70s. One hasn't been in the top flight for 18 years. Three are meandering around the mid-table of the championship, having already sacked their managers. One is towards the foot of League Two. And one, of course, is following its greatest ever season with the worst ever defence of the Premier League title. There's also a litany of stories behind the scenes over the years. Northampton Town are embroiled in a financial scandal where the local council lent £10.25 million to the club, which seems to have disappeared. Birmingham City's former owner Carson Young arrived and promised to turn the club into a powerhouse, but after bringing in the League Cup they were relegated and he ended up in prison for money laundering. He wanted the club to be as big as Manchester United or Chelsea in China, but they're not even the biggest club in their own city. Wolves have made some terrible managerial decisions over the years, Appointments and sackings that made no sense at all. And Coventry, well, where do you start? Villa, in particular, is a desperate tale. Don't get me wrong, I don't particularly care. But a lot of Villa fans and Leicester fans, for that matter, have expressed support for Cov's plight. So I do appreciate that. The BBC works out that Aston Villa have the second worst points percentage of any team that's been in the top four divisions since 2010-11, when Martin O'Neill left. I'm no expert, but a combination of that departure, Randy Lerner arriving and a lack of ambition have just about brought them to their knees. Another leads. They've had chances to win cups that were just squandered. And of course, there was that slaughter against Arsenal in the FA Cup final. They went 437 days without an away win at one point, going down and missing out on the new Premier League deal. They've still spent £70 million so far this season. And for what? Mid-table? And they're £81 million in debt. Chaotic. How can a city of Birmingham size of 1.1 million not have a team anywhere near the top division? The city, as a footballing entity, is horrendously underperforming. They should be up there with Manchester and Liverpool. And instead they're being left behind by Huddersfield and Brighton. They're not the only fallen giants. Nottingham's going through a real trouble. You can see a link below to a blog written by a friend of mine who calculated that the city is the toughest area of anywhere in the Football League for a manager to survive. And that was a year ago. There have been plenty more sacked since then. Notts County used to be a real hotbed of talent. You ask a Notts County fan about the early 90s and Tommy Johnson, Craig Short and Mark Draper. Perhaps the reason the Midlands struggles is that there are too many rivalries, too many local derbies, and that makes a season too tiring. Maybe, but maybe that should mean that they're more up for more games. And if that is the case... Why does the North West do so well with all the clubs that they've got up there? And is it me? Or is there a real lack of young players coming through from those clubs? How many Midlands players are making the England squad? Daniel Sturridge is from Birmingham. Gary Cahill's from Derbyshire. But who else? Why isn't there more ambition from these clubs? Why isn't there a mega stadium to match Wembley and Twickenham? The biggest ground in the Midlands is Villa Park, 43,000. It's not big enough for a super club. But then again, why would anyone build it when they can't fill it? And is there something to be said about the overall economy and ambition of the area? In Kov's case, for example, 
we've essentially mirrored local industry. Boom time in the 60s. And now look, maybe some of the newer investors, such as Jaguar in Wolverhampton, will eventually bear fruit. Perhaps HS2 could bring back the glory years of the Midlands economy. But we've still got a long time to wait for that. I just find it strange that when one club in the area finally does get its act together and do something, it takes a miracle for it to happen. And then they instantly revert to type again the season afterwards.